If you've played OC Mania for a decent amount of time, you might notice a certain transition in one of those years. We've gone from an era where density gains you a lot of PP to alien maps that break the system on occasion. But sometimes you start to wonder, what has caused such a dramatic transition of mapping to the point where some maps break the game's fundamentals as we know them? Today, we'll be taking a look at the ranked section and analyze the evolution it's had over the years. This is an overview of Osmania's ranked section. To begin the video, we first have to go back in time and then progressively get to where we are now with the current state of the ranked section. We'll be separating the years into eras of ranked mapping to make explaining easier. The beginning of ranked maps could be described as an experimental phase with only a handful of maps being uploaded to the site, with examples such as only my railgun and chain destruction. There isn't much that can be said about that era, because Mania was a new and infamous game during those years. There were mostly 7 key maps during this time, 4 key maps did exist too, but they were very easy, only being 3 stars at most. But one of the more well-known maps from that era was Imperishable Night 2006, a map that even to this day only has 2 SS ranks on the 4 key difficulty. We also have II, which is a brutal quad stream map and to this day, the only double S rank it has is from Wonder. It would be with the next era that those mania as a whole would get a whole new batch of maps. The era from 2015 to 2017 is regarded by many players as the golden age of Osumania. Many maps with different patterns and difficulties would be uploaded, from easy and sight readable maps to various Jack and Stamina maps, to some of the more well known SV maps. And whatever the f this is, this era would also bring some of the most popular maps we know and love today Spacetime, Manira, Speedcore 300, Go Beyond, Triumph and Regret. Though most of us might say otherwise regarding Triumph. The list goes on. This era shows a lot of diversity in mapping and shows that people experimented with different patterns for the maps they made. And this would carry on with the new era, although with some slight changes. That quality of the ranking section would carry on throughout 2018 and 2019 with some of the maps posted being Black Lotus, Mazare Party and Botabata Animation. Which to be completely honest with you, I've tried to gain PP off of at several points in time. The maps that were posted during that time could be argued to be similar in quality to the ones in previous years, and it shows when you start playing them. Surprisingly, with the coming of the new decade, that quality would take a different turn as the years passed. With the coming of 2020, Osumania would experience a severe drought of difficult maps, with mostly easier maps being uploaded. There were some sporadic exceptions like Machine Gun Sci-Style, Reviver, Welcome, yes, that's the name of the map, Wool Parts, and some 7 key maps like We Want to Run ranked during that era. What is surprising about these easy maps is that modding them is very easy, with some of them being ranked within weeks. That in turn created an extremely noticeable lack of difficult maps that many players voiced their concerns over. That lack of difficult maps would be satiated around 2022 to 2023, but in a way that literally nobody imagined would happen. This is Eternal White. The map consists of various alien patterns throughout the map and it would become amongst the first maps to pioneer the era of alien mapping. What some players likely didn't realize at the time was that this map and many others like it would abuse the current PP system, rewarding far too much PP than they were intended to. That oversight would be fixed in a rework implemented in 2022, but it would turn out that this rework only made things worse. Nowadays, the ranking section consists of a lot of Ellen maps because Long Note started bringing a lot more PP than ever before, and the leaderboard on Rebirth the End is also a testament to that statement. System Error is another example I can give. Multiple 7 key players got their highest PP scores because of that map. The problem with 7 key maps, however, is that because of the star rating, anyone can play half time and receive upwards of a thousand PP in the process. Those two examples alone are enough proof of the shift in meta. 
I personally hate leaving videos on a sour note, so I think it's gonna be best to discuss the topic of the ranking section with some top players. I've personally contacted two very skilled top players from 7k and 4k respectively to get their opinion on the topic and this is what they had to say. For 7k, I decided to ask my country's number one, Dinner Man. When asked about the state of 7 key maps, he at first replied that they are total bullshit with the peppy laugh emoji. <laughs> okay, enough bullshit. He responded by saying that some of the maps that are currently uploaded are way too inflated and do not require much skill to be played. When I asked him what could be done to alleviate the problem, he responded that nominators should be having a better judgment when ranking maps, and that the way those maps break the system shouldn't force Pepe to do another rework to fix that specific problem. For 4Key, we decided to ask Hi Hi, as he has records on many of the charts currently uploaded. He said that there is not much variety in the difficult maps given how many L and slash hybrid maps are being pushed out in order to raise the star rating higher. He also knows that there has been a lack of normal speed maps in recent times. When asked about how to alleviate the problem, he suggested that overall rise should be nerfed and that the star rate should be buffed in a way to not favor Vibro as much. From those answers alone, you can see two very different perspectives and approaches based on the answers they gave. Whether you want to add to the conversation, it would be appreciated to write a comment. Start a healthy discussion and talk about what will be helpful to the ranking section going forward. And that was my overview on the ranking section. I hope that the way the ranking section changes comes from a positive place. I want to thank all of these amazing people on screen and a huge thanks to Vinkis and Yuki for helping me understand the process of ranking maps. You are of huge help and I appreciate your efforts. I hope to see you all next time.